You are watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Avers. Today's topic, who's a candidate for bioidentical hormone replacement therapy? With us, we have an expert on the topic, Dr. Fotino. Dr. Fotino, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, Randy. Now, before we get into today's topic, and this is a big topic, uh, tell us a little bit about your center. Um, I mean, who's the typical patient? The that are coming in for this? Usually, I, I, for women, I usually see somebody w around their menopausal years, 49, 50 years of age. Okay. Uh, typically, they've started just having the hot flashes or their night sweats. Um, some women I've had, that they've, they've drenched their clothes from night sweats. Uh, it could be somebody that's noticing their hair is starting to fall out or thin, or their skin is getting thinner. Um, they, when they bump into something, they're getting bruises or cutting, getting cuts. Uh, it could be anybody that has depression. You know, um, Somebody who's all of a sudden always been a really good mood and everything all of a sudden starts having depression that's typically a hormonal, a hormonal thing um men wise it's usually men come to see me uh typically it's either the libido thing or uh they're they're not looking like they used to they're exercising and and working out as hard as they can and they haven't been able to lose weight or, or they're not getting the results yes not getting the results is this true i mean you say that you know women will come to you yeah. in their 40s for mm -hmm. bioidentical hormones and then they end up dragging their husbands in Oh yeah, I do see that a lot, or it's the other way around. Why, why do they do that? Because they see the change in themselves, that they feel much better, and they want to share it with their, their spouse. Or they're noticing that their libido is going up, but their spouse's libido is staying the same, and they're saying, oh, you need to come do this. This, this, gets, some, this gets you on this so your libido can improve. So what are the age ranges? I mean, is it, is it mostly women, you know, right at about 40 or they're just starting to get what, menopausal symptoms? Typically that's my majority of patients. Um, and men are more spread out a little bit more because the, the andropause, which is what they call technically the menopause for men, is a lot more insidious, meaning it more gradual over time. And it, it, people don't really pick up on it as much, okay? For women, usually it's the women in around their times when they start having menopause. It's a hot flashes, night sweats, stuff like that, okay? I do have some young patients, younger patients, and those are usually more pinpoint issues are occurring. And I do have older patients, you know, I have people in their 60s and 70s. And I see so many different symptoms from all that, but it's funny how the improvements that you see in a lot of the patients, um, it could be, they can come to you, Randy, and, and, and their main problem is muscle aches and pains and joint pain, right? Okay. Uh, and when they come back and see you, they say, oh, oh, man, that feels great. But I didn't realize that my libido was so low. My husband loves you. <laughs> okay. You know, okay. you start seeing improvements in all the whole person. And when you do medicine, total, traditional medicine, we tend to car compartmentalize the patient, meaning we, if it's their heart, their heart. If it's their kidneys, their kidneys. Okay. This medicine, you take the whole being. You treat them for their deficiency in hormone. You replace their hormones where they need to be. You also take care of their nutrition. Yeah, you have like four or five keys. Yeah. To, to, to health, yes. which is your philosophy yeah. for wellness. What yeah. is it? What are they? Well, nutrition. If you don't feed the body right, you're not going to be able to heal it correctly. You're not going to be able to, to, to do the things that are important for the body to stay healthy. All right. And number two uh, is, is the right kind of exercise. Um, you don't want to do too much or too little. You want to make sure you get with a trainer that actually can give you the, the, current, the, the best information about how to train for your body type. Okay. Number three, vitamins, minerals, and supplements. You need them. We don't get, our food does not have enough vitamins and minerals. So you lay it out for them on yeah. your program? Yeah. Okay. okay. I go through them and then we even have, you know, we're bringing in a, a nutritionist. We're bringing in, we have people that uh, partners, we partnered up with some uh, trainers that we know that do a really good job that will, you know, meet with our patients and work with them. The, and the third thing is, is detox. And I'm not talking about alcohol and drugs. I'm talking about uh, caffeine. I'm talking about uh, aspartame. I'm talking about these chemicals that we take in daily that can affect our overall health. And, and I don't mean that we just drop cold turkey. We don't go from a pot of coffee to no coffee at all. We're talking about you slowly decreasing you okay. over time. So getting healthier. Yeah. Detoxing exactly. Exactly. Oh, good. Exactly. good. And, then, and, and then reducing stress would be the other thing that I would uh, be working on. I mean, stress is, is pervasive in, in, our, in our, all our life, okay? And the stress that we have now is, is completely different from the stress we had th two or 3,000 years ago. Stress was important back then, it's, and we're talking about cortisol, because when we had a threat, it was a physical threat. So we were able to use that cortisol and the stuff that the cortisol released, adrenaline and, and sugar, and we were able to get rid of it out of our body because they were running away from that stress, right? Okay. Nowadays, our stress is more mental. There's some chemical and physical stress, but most of it's mental, and that's hard to run away from. The other thing is sleep, which goes hand in hand with stress. If we don't improve on sleep, you can't improve the regenerative process. Are there a lot of people that can't sleep? Yeah, there's a ton of people, because I can see tons of people that can't sleep. It's, 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 it's bad. So you get them sleeping again? Yeah. Okay. 
Um, and then finally, the biggest thing is optimizing your hormones, which I think is should be number one on the list. Um, because if you don't have those building blocks that repair your body, muscles and bones, and, and make you feel better, then it don't matter what you do. I'll give you an example. I know you're in hormonal decline, okay? Um, I told you my age, that's right. You told me about your age, and let's say, take somebody your age, um, and you exercise an hour, mm -hmm. right? Take somebody at 20, or take you at 20, and exercise for an hour. Will you get the same results? No. No, why? You tell me. Well, it's because you don't have those building blocks to build that muscle. Okay, good point. Okay. That testosterone is much lower than it was before. That thyroid was much more lower than it was before when you were in your 20s. And then certain hormones go up in your body, like what I previously talked about, cortisol and uh, insulin. And they, they, they work against each other. And over time, you can't rebuild those muscles and bones as faster than, okay. than, 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 than breaking them down. So do you want to, for example, return hormone levels to where I would be in my 20s? Yes. I would definitely want to do that. And if you do that, are you convinced that I would feel? I'm convinced. Like I see it like that. I see it in patients. I see it in patients. Interesting. You know, I had a lady that came in and saw me was depressed and moody all the time. Her parent, her kids would would want to stay away from her. Her husband was scared of her, and she started hormones, and and, and she her mood improved. She felt better. I mean, I've had women. I mean, anticipating your interview, I've had women that have come on my show talking about other things, and they say before hormone replacement therapy, they literally felt like a veil. Was over their head. I mean, they were just depressed. They were crying all the time. The best term I hear is I always, it sounds like an exaggeration yeah. sometimes when I hear some of these stories. But it can be life. Yeah, yeah. You can see it. it actually, it's almost like when they get better, it, the veil comes up. And they see clearer. That fog. Is, the fog is what I hear. Fog is the biggest term that I hear from a lot of my patients and stuff. Okay. And, and, and I, I even put it on this, and I wanted to touch on this with you. You know, if I took your blood at um, your age right now. Yeah. And um, we looked at your hormones. And what we would find that is you would be normal for your age, right? Okay. Let's say I make the error, the error, and I put you at 20 years of age. I put your age as 20. Mm -hmm. Would your blood levels be, be considered low or, or normal? They'd con be considered low. Yeah. So why is it okay for a 20-year-old to have higher blood levels and it's not okay for you to have a higher blood level? Just because everybody else around you has low blood levels? So with women, what you're doing is you're taking 40-year-old women. I want to make sure mm -hmm. I catch your, your philosophy yeah. here. You get them eating right, yeah. get them back to sleep, the right kind of uh, nutrition. But you're returning hormone levels to where they used to be. Yeah. I mean, is that the whole idea? Yeah. That's, it's, it sounds as simple. It's not as simple, okay, because I learn a lot from women. Okay. <laughs> They're a complex human being. You have to listen to your patients. That's okay. the first thing. And then you look at their blood levels and you get, and, and, and for women, if you get them where they, they, they need to be, which I will tell you, if you do, they will sing praises for you. I, I, I love my women patients. I, I think they give me so much information whenever I, I, I treat them. It, it, it's, it's, it makes me feel so good. Are there a lot of women that are suffering 40 plus, 45 plus that, uh, that don't have to be? Yeah. I, yes, totally. There's, <laughs> they come see me. I'll help you. So what are the commonly replaced hormones? Well, the commonly replaced hormones, it's more for women than men. Uh, typically, men are uh, testosterone and thyroid. Okay. Women are uh, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, thyroid. And then there's some lesser hormones like DHEA and melatonin, which is a hormone. And then I do do hormone, uh, human growth hormone, but I, I try to get it up naturally through improving your sleep. Stage four sleep, which is your deepest sleep, Good. is when you typically improve your uh, human growth hormone. With women, testosterone, how does a woman know? Because I don't even think, when I think of women, I don't think of women as having a testosterone level. How does a woman know if she's low in testosterone? Well, believe it or not, your, your best, uh, the, the best hormone for your skin is testosterone. It increases collagen and elastin in your skin, which are the two things that keep that skin you know, nice okay. and taut. It keeps it from getting paper thin and keeps you from getting that damage to that skin later in life. Um, libido. Oh, that's a big thing for libido. Women have libido too. And uh, I see a lot of relationships uh, get damaged because a woman's libido drops off, the man stays high, and it becomes an issue. I mean, do you ever have women that have like, you know, on, on, on the blood work or whatever you're doing that have like a, almost a nothing testosterone level? You give them testosterone and they get their libido back? Yes. I've had them come to me and tell me, don't take me off my testosterone or don't decrease my testosterone because I feel great on that. I'm having a wonderful sex life with my husband. It's, it's dramatic. And, and there's study after study that shows it improves your, your, your energy, decreases fat, increases muscle, okay. helps with sleep, helps with memory, 
And there's a lot of issues that women come in for me because of that. They, they say, my memory's low. I can't, I keep on forgetting my keys. I forget to go, what I do when I, I go into a room. There's a lot of things that I see that, that patients come to me and they, it, it screams hormones to me. So how do you give it to them, testosterone for women? Is it a cream, injection, is well, it a pill? Typically, uh, I start off with a, a cream. Uh, it's, it's a vaginal cream. It's, it's placed in the vaginal area. Uh, if that doesn't work for the patient, I usually do an oral a pill um, uh, for them. I, I stay away from injections from women. Um, for uh, like estrogen and progesterone, estrogen is typically a pill if they have no risk for heart disease, like high blood pressure. Uh, if they do have that risk uh, or they're 10 years out of menopause, I typically do a cream. Okay. And again, an, another thing we do is progesterone replacement, which is a very important hormone for women. It's, it's usually the first hormone they start losing uh, when they start hitting 35, 40 years of age. And this is the, considered the pregnancy hormone. And, and, and we call that the, the, what gives you the glow of pregnancy. Now, it's an anti, a true antidepressant for a woman. It, it helps your mood. You know, I had a woman that came and saw me, was crying all the time. You know, you start them on progesterone and you replace that hormone and, and, and they, they, they glow and their mood improves and they feel much better about themselves. So the progesterone is the first one that drops? Typically in a woman, uh, as far as the two main hormones for a woman, which is progesterone and estrogen, okay? okay. That's where they call uh, estrogen dominance, okay? Uh, and it's not necessarily because estrogen is too high, it's typically because progesterone is too low. All right. And most of the issues that we saw uh, with a lot of the studies that were done on hormones was because progesterone was too low. Okay, the increase in risk for breast cancer, uterine cancer, and ovarian cancer, the problems with anxiety and depression, the problems with sleep, the heart issues. Progesterone protects your heart as much as estrogen does. Is that right? Yes. So let's talk about thyroid then for a minute. Thi I mean, what are the symptoms of a low thyroid, I guess, for men and women? Well, if you're, you're a woman that, you know, you're, or you find yourself, or even a man, and you're in, a, in the shower and you're noticing more hairs coming out of your head, or when you're brushing your hair, hair is falling all over the place, that could be a sign of low thyroid. If your skin is thinning, again, I told you testosterone is best for your for skin, but they all overlap. So thyroid can also be affected on your skin. So if your skin is thinning and you're noticing you don't have that beautiful skin that you used to have when you're in your 20s, that's probably thyroid. If your energy drops, if you feel like you're just, oh my God, I can't do anything I used to do, that could be thyroid as well. Uh, uh, libido, thyroid's keyed into libido. Um, and it helps with erections too. So it, it, for women and men, thyroid's very important in, in the sexual function. Uh, heart. Actually, thyroid reduces your risk, uh, reduces your LDL, or increases your LDL receptors, which is the bad cholesterol in, in your, in your uh, uh, body. If it reduces that, it reduces the risk for heart disease. And constipation is another thing. If you have never had constipation before, all of a sudden you start having constipation. As could be issue. thyroid. Could be thyroid, you know. Uh, fat metabolism, you know. Now, there's a lot of adjusting of these hormones, right? Yeah. I mean, along the way. It's not just... Uh... You know, I mean, you have to, what, what do you call it? I mean, you're just adjusting their home. Yeah, just, and it's, it, it's, it's intensive. Um, I see patients every four to six weeks uh, uh, while they're on the program. So until they get the optimal, and then I push them out to six months to a year. Okay. Why do I do that? Because I want to get you to your optimal hormones fast so that you feel good, and then we, we can let you go. The, the biggest thing that you got to re remember about hormones is that they you, you have to be in an optimal range. We, I call it the Goldilocks rule. You have to- The Goldilocks rule? rule the Goldilocks rule. It's just got to be just right. You can't have too little, and you can't have too much. And when you put something in somebody's body, and, and you don't adjust it, and something happens, it can be necessarily bad, but you can't go in there and remove it. It becomes another procedure. In this, when when a patient has too much, you just back down on it. But what about testosterone? You know, you hear this, especially men, that the problem is it causes, or it could cause, prostate cancer. Well, first of all, there's no studies ever shown testosterone causes prostate cancer. And actually, there's evidence now that's showing that if you have low testosterone, it can actually increase your risk for prostate cancer. Okay. So we, we actually have not seen in our clinic any increased risk for prostate cancer. Exactly. But too much testosterone is bad. Yeah, it, it, it can be bad. And what can, are the symptoms there? Well, one of the biggest things you'll notice is hair growth, acne, oily skin, aggression can occur. You don't want to have that, obviously. Um, uh, you can actually, but in men, you want hair growth. Uh, it, not on the, it won't grow on the head, it'll be on the body more than anything like that. You can have hair loss in the head. Uh, that's the main things. And you can give medicines that prevent a lot of that, those issues. Um, uh, the biggest thing that you'll see, with, especially as far as medically, you'll see an increase in, in cholesterol if you go too high with testosterone. And that's not good. What's another hormone? Another hormone is estrogen. And, and this is the one that when you go too low, and this is very important for women as well as men, but it's, it's mo probably the most important for women. When you go too low, that signifies menopause. Now, what is menopause? Any woman yeah, that, what defines it? Yeah, any woman that's ever gone through menopause, they know the, they know exactly what it is. The, it's 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 the 
hot flashes, the night sweats, the, the vaginal dryness, the memory fog, all those things. If, if, if you're a woman that, and I've had one, a patient that this, one, of the, one example of this is a patient that I had come to see me, and she was, the um, uh, main thing is that I'm drenching my clothes every night when I'm sleeping. I'm going to have to get up and change my, my pajamas. And she says, I want that to stop. I'm tired of it. And we started her on estrogen because we found out that it was low. And she so came, usually estrogen is the sweats. Yeah, the night sweats, yes. Okay. And, and she came back and, and she said, you changed my life. I can sleep now beside my husband. He doesn't get freaked out by me op- uh, flipping the, the covers off and putting the covers back on. He doesn't wake up when I get up to change my clothes. I'm sleeping through the night. I, it's like, it's like a, a night and day to her. And how soon before it starts working? I mean, in your best cases that you've heard. Best case after a month. I've had people, you know, t- click after a month. And it's, it's been dramatic. And some people it takes longer, but for the most part, we, we, we see improvements in some symptoms in the, in the first few days, you know? One of the biggest ones I see, and a lot for men and women, is, is sleep. Sleep typically improves, it's the first thing that improves. Now some people, it's the exact opposite, maybe libido, but there is a little bit of improvement in something. Now with taking estrogen, because there are some <laughs> controversies surrounding, I guess, hormone replacement in women with breast cancer and, and other cancers. You know, it's like, you know, certain women will say, you know, you don't want to mess with the hormones. I mean, there are going to be issues. Traditional medicine doctors can say things like that. So what are, what, what is your response to those kind of statements? Well, the, or maybe laying some fears to rest here. Well, the, the research, if you, you break down the research, the studies that they were looking at, uh, estrogen um, didn't increase the risk for breast cancer over the short term. It just increased it slightly over the long term. And remember, they were doing studies with both the synthetic estrogens and synthetic progesterones and the, some of the, the regular hormones like the bioidenticals, progesterone, and estradiol. And what they were finding was when they gave progestins, which is the hormones you find in birth control, which are the synthetic progesterones, progestins, uh, increased the risk of heart disease, of heart disease and, and, and breast cancer. But when you added progesterone, it decreased the risk for breast cancer okay. and heart disease less than the normal population. But they forgot, they, because they lumped them together, they said all hormones are the same, they made it sound like progesterone was bad for you too. I'll give you an, even an anecdotal thing. Look at it this way. You see a lot of women proge- uh, with breast cancer at age 20. Is that right? Okay. No, you don't. You don't see a lot of women at no. breast cancer at age okay. 20. Okay. Okay. When do you see women have breast cancer? In their 30s, 40s? I guess even 40s. higher than that. 40s, yeah, 50s, 50s. Is typically. Interesting. What, who has higher progesterone? The woman at 20? or the woman at 30 or 40 or 50. So I guess the, the older women have lower to progesterone. So are there people, I mean, when you get together and network with other integrative doctors that believe that a lot of the reasons why women are getting, uh, you know, cancers in, in their 40s is because of hormonal decline? Yes, yes. And so you believe that there's a, uh, uh, like a protective element here? Yes, it's totally protective, you know? I mean, I had a, a lady, uh, unfortunately she already had breast cancer and she came and saw me 10 years after her breast cancer. Uh, uh, issue and she was having they put her on all these drugs that kill off her hormones and stuff like that and her libido was down uh, memory was down her relationship with her husband completely was gone because she hadn't had sex with him in 10 years we started her on hormones and she feels great her relationship has, has improved what we're doing yeah we're saving their lives when we give the, these hormones that kill off the hormones that supposedly fuel cancer but we're also not improving their we're killing off these diseases but we're not improving their lifestyle okay my goal is, hey, you're going to live to 80, 90, 100 years of age, right? Okay. I want you to have the same quality of life you had when you were 20, when you were 40, 50, 60, 70. Why do we have to sit there and listen and say, there's nothing you can do about this? You know, there, we, we put a man on the moon and you're saying that we can't sit here and improve somebody's life. We have to sit there and accept the changes that come from having, you know, the aging. If we know that if we replace your testosterone, and your libido improves, and your sense of well-being improves, then why can't we do it? So you're convinced it's safe and effective? Yes, there's studies. There's 20 years of studies in, in peer-reviewed journals. JAMA, New England Journal of Medicine, they all show that these things are improve, they improve the quality of life for patients. Is this a new way of uh, aging gracefully? Yeah, in your well, opinion? well <laughs> I tell my patients, uh, you know, the, when, if I told you, you know, act your age, you jump over this, this counter and beat the living crap out of me, basically. I tell patients, I don't want you to age gracefully. I want you to age like, I don't want you to age at all. I want you to, to maintain what you are, you know? And I have a lot of patients come and tell me, you know, I, they're successful businessmen and, and women. And they say, you know, 
you know that saying, if I knew what I knew now and, and what had the body that I was when I was 20, I'd, the, the sky would be the limit, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, they actually come in and say, I know what I know now, and I have the body of a 20-year-old, and, and I feel like I'm 20. The sky is no longer the limit. Now, you believe, and one of the things you say is that the second half of life could be the best half of life with wisdom and perspective. And, yeah. Uh, you believe that. Yeah, I believe it totally. I have patient after patient that has that. I have a, a lady, 65 years old, came with muscle aches and joint pain, couldn't move, comes in one day to see me on a follow-up appointment. And I'm sitting there, and I say, how are you feeling? Because I feel great. But I think my neighbors think I'm crazy. I was like, well, why do your neighbors think you're crazy? <laughs> and she looks at me and says, well, I was running around the house with a squirt gun with my grandson. I was drenched. And they were looking at me across the street and they were like, she must be crazy. And I looked at her as that's exactly what I want you to do. Not that they want you to know you're crazy. I want you right. to be able to run around with your grandson. I don't this want is you... the person that you gave yeah. hormones yeah. And, 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 and the rest of the program. Yeah. And she feels great. You know, I, it's, it's patient after patient, you know, I had, I'll give you even a small little vanity one, which is, it's, it's funny. I have several patients that come in and they say, does your hair color change when, when you start hormones? Uh, I said, yeah, you're, you're, it becomes darker like it used to be. I've had several patients. One guy, he went to his hairdresser and he said, or his barber and he basically said, yeah, you know, your hair's, he didn't really realize it. He said, that's awesome. Hair gets darker. Yeah. It's, 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 so is it more energy level? I mean, when you, when you, you take a 45-year-old, 50-year-old or younger and give them youthful levels of hormones, yeah. get their nutrition under control, the record of exercise, yeah. you're saying that they feel like they're young again. Yeah. They tell you that. Yeah. They say that they could do everything. I had a couple. Uh, the, the husband came into me first. And he started the program. Then he got his wife in. And usually the, the ones that are skeptical are the ones that bring the, the wife that comes in after, because her husband or the husband that comes in because their wife told them to come in, right? Okay. And um, they come in, they went on a vacation, and he comes back with this big smile on his face, and he tells me, yeah, we just went on a vacation uh, abroad, and man, I, I feel great. I feel like I was 20, and it wasn't only in the, it, it, outside, it was in the bedroom, too. It, it, it rekindles relationships, too, because for men, the way we kind of get our expression of love is through the touch and, and sexual activity. And women, when they lose that libido because their testosterone or their thyroid starts dropping off, they think they become to think that, that sex is a chore, but that harms that relationship. I want it to be fun for both men and women. So they tell you that. Yeah. Oh, they, they come out, they'll tell me anything. I had a gentleman that, he, you know, he hadn't had an erection in 20 years and he comes back and he says, hey, you changed my life. So you tell them what to eat as well. Yeah, we, we, we have them uh, talk about their nutrition. We also talk about um, what exercise regimen they need, what, what supplements and vitamins and minerals. Vitamins and minerals are, are important. They're almost as important as hormones. I have it at the top of the list of what they need to be on. And then the hormones are the second part of that list. I know your age. You look young for your age. Are you taking hormones? Yes, I am. So you believe in it. I have a physician that... that What do you take? Can I ask? Uh, On the spot? You can ask. I do testosterone and I do thyroid. And you think it's healthy? I I think... I feel 100% better than I used to be. I used to drag... Feel like tired all the time. I would would think I'd got plenty of sleep and I wake up. I don't want to wake up. So when you were involved in like emergency or urgent care, helping people that were dying or in an urgent situation, a problem, because you could have impact there, save some lives. Yeah. Now that you're doing what you're doing, do you think you have more impact here than you did there? Yeah, because I'm catching people upstream. I'm not only going to save their life, I'm going to make them feel better. I'm not saying that there's nothing, nothing wrong with saving somebody's life, but most medicine you know, if somebody has a heart attack, they're going to, their, their quality of life is going to go down. I want to prevent you from having that heart attack. Okay. If I can prevent you from having that heart attack, hey, I've done more than anything else. Are there people, women that go to you that, that are depressed? They have these night sweats that maybe they're on an antidepressant. Do you ever wean people off some of these things? Have yeah. you seen it oh, happen? It's very successful. I do it all the time. And some patients do it on their own because they feel so good. They're like, I want to get off this. I've had several women that have come in with antidepressants, anxiety, anti-anxiety medicines, like Xanax and those kind of medicines, and they are like, I don't need these anymore. You've changed my life. It is so, it's so, it's, as a physician, you don't know how much that makes you feel. That you can actually, in, in, in real life, take them off the medicines that supposedly you got to keep them on. What, what about things like cholesterol? Have you seen cholesterol lowering naturally? Oh, yes. Testosterone is one of the best hormones to lower your cholesterol. Even for women? Yes. I see it all the time. So they're called natural hormones. Yeah. Bioidentical hormones. Yeah. So, but what should they look for in a doctor that's doing this? 
Well, they need... you say there's a lot to it. Yeah, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of doctors that do it. You know, just make sure that they have gone to a training program on hormones. The second thing, you want a doctor who's going to spend time with you because if a doctor only spends five minutes with you, or you actually see a doctor, I've seen heard of clinics that you don't see a doctor. Okay, but you want to see a doctor because. Like I told you, the diagnosis of most of these hormone deficiencies is based on signs and symptoms. Okay. It's not based on blood levels. So we want patients to come in and talk to us. And one of the things I do when I, right before I leave my patient, I say, hey, you know, I want to break this, 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 this stigma where you can't bother the doctor. Oh, you can't bother the doctor. You have to go to the nurse and this and that. <laughs> no. Okay. I want patients to contact me. I give them my email. I want them to call me or email me if they have an issue or if they're feeling great. I yeah, want to know I that mean, you're too. in North Carolina. I mean, in California, Hollywood, I mean, you know, and I talk to these, I mean, celebrities, yeah. the people that look fantastic for a living yeah. seem to all be on hormones. Yeah. And they swear by them. And, and, and th- rightfully so. You have yeah. a photo. Yes. I want to show that photo before you leave. Okay. Because you said, I want to show this photo. Yeah. This is one of our patients. Um, um, this is the before afters with the blonde hair, and the, uh, the before is with the blonde. Doesn't hair. even look like the same woman. No, it doesn't at all. Um, um, she's been coming with me. She she actually did another program with us, which is our weight loss program, but she also did hormones, and she told me this. I will not lie about this. This is what she told me. She said, "If you gave me the choice between eating and hormones, I won't eat." <laughs> That's how much has changed her okay. life. Okay. Her relationship with her. It's husband, a lot thinner, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, she, and she's happy. Look at the smile on her. I mean, that's what we want. We want to get that from people. We want people to feel like they feel the greatest. And there's a lot of women out there that are feeling miserable that don't have to. Yeah, yeah. You're saying. Yeah. Come see me. I'll help you. So they call your office, make an appointment. You'll meet with them every time. Yeah. And uh, and they can get started. I don't pawn you off to any other doctor. And you have a weight loss program within your practice. Yes, we, we do. We should mention that. Uh-huh. Well, good. We can have, even help men. We have a, a male clinic as well so okay good all right well thank you for coming on the show thank you Randy. great info great thank info you. you've been watching the wellness hour leader in medical news and information i'm randy Alvarez. if you would like to see this interview again online on our website we have it under dr fotinos or under hrt or bioidentical hormones uh, and for those of you that are on twitter and you want to comment about dr fotinos you could put uh hashtag wellness hour for now i wish you could help thanks for watching the wellness hour The leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.